we're at La Berge Casino Baton Rouge. We brought our Corniche this year. It's a 1982 Corniche. This is um, a 1986 Ferrari Testarossa. I brought a 65 TR6 Triumph motorcycle. 1973 Alfa Romeo GTV 2000. This is a 2011 Rolls Royce Ghost with the flying lady here. She pops up whenever you ask her to. These are dedicated people and people that put a lot of time and energy and money and, and uh, care into their vehicles and we're just happy to have a place for them to, to display them and show them and tell their story. Bubba Willis. Bubba. Ford's founder, Mike Marsh, the LaBerge Eurofest Classic European Auto and Motorcycle Show is a labor of love. In just its second year, it's become as distinctive and unique as the cars, motorcycles, and exhibitors it attracts. I just like the old cars. I really do. Um, and, and the new ones. Some of those new ones are just drop-dead gorgeous, too. What's your major? Uh, mechanical engineering. So this is a Disneyland for you? <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. It's a quality show and uh, it's just well done and uh, it's a good place to show these uh, European vehicles, whether they be automobiles or motorcycles. It's a beautiful venue. People love to see the cars. Um, Mike Marsh has done such a fantastic job organizing the show and he's such a gentleman and a, a true car guy. What kind of cars do people see at Eurofest? Everything. I mean, uh, Rolls Royce, Bentley, Maserati, Ferrari, Aston Martin, Mercedes, Jaguar, Austin Healey, Triumph, and motorcycles. Don't forget the motorcycles. A drive down historic River Road to the nearby Homeless House Plantation and Gardens was added this year to a growing lineup of LaBerge Eurofest events. The drive was great. There's nothing like driving these country roads with a police escort with a long train of classic cars. After lunch in the plantation's award-winning restaurant, a tour of the historic house, and a stroll through its gardens, it was back to LaBerge and a Riverside packet party in the VIP lounge. By morning, the cars, bikes, and judges were in place, and the show... driving. You're driving? Free and open to the public... ...was firing on all cylinders. Uh, brought a 1949 MGTC modified for vintage racing. The uh, car was built in my driveway, painted in my driveway. I, th I think I just about did everything on it except bore the engine myself. I had to take that to a machine shop. Everybody likes it though. So it's different. Guys, I'm borrowing away from you. We brought an 82 Corniche. Got about 130,000 miles on it. It's um, the first car that my husband and I went out on a date in. When, uh, when we went on our first date, his friend said, Oh, why don't you take her out in the convertible? If she's too vain and won't go in a convertible, then you shouldn't date her. I was like, gosh, I shaved my head to ride in a Corniche. <laughs> Love at first drive. Huh? Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of fun to see the different cars, the different European cars. And it's fun to see, you know, new cars. There's a considerable number of new Rolls Royces that are here this year that, that we haven't seen. So y'all having fun today? Yeah, let's give them a big smile. Well, I bought three cars. I brought that. 1986 Ferrari Testarossa. Behind me is the uh, 2008 uh, Lamborghini Superleggera, Gallardo. Next to that is a little 911 Turbo, 2002 911 Turbo. Those are my cars. The Lamborghini is a 2008. That's the last year they stopped making the Superleggera version. Superleggera is Italian for uh, ultralight. And uh, what they did is they, they took away some of the body weight with uh, carbon fiber panels and whatnot. It drives like a Porsche. Um, and it's uh, it's very fast. That's a 911 turbo. It's a 996 model. The engineering and the the road handling, the acceleration and the braking, it, it's an extraordinary car. It really is. This is um, a 1986 Ferrari Testarossa. My wife got me this for my birthday six years ago. What a wife. It was one of the fastest production cars you could buy back in the day. Now, if people drive it, they think it's kind of heavy. It doesn't even have power steering. This one, I like the, the shift gate. That's pretty cool to still see the, the manual shifting and the, just the, the all the cylinders. Flat 12 in this one, I believe. Uh, so that's pretty cool. It's a 1930 Austin 7 Chummy. A Chummy? Yes, because when you sit in it, you have to be chummy with your passengers. The Austin 7 was made from 1922 to 1939 in various forms. This is an open tour 
It's got an aluminum body and a four-cylinder 747cc engine. People think it's a kit that I built myself and I tell them no, it's not a kit, it's a real 1930 car. <laughs> the car is not rare because in England they have maybe about 800 of them running. Everybody has a VW store. You talk to anybody, somebody knows somebody or had a VW. And there's always a story of some humor behind it. Tell me what you brought. 68 double cab pickup, all totally redone. Runs very smooth, drove down here. No problem from Vicksburg. Runs great, daily driver. I've heard much talk about your daily driver. <laughs> yes, that is this 1978 Mercedes 300 CD. I'm obsessed with it. It has not had any restoration done. It belonged to my great uncle. His garage kept, he drove it on Sundays. So being a 1978, it has 65,000 original miles. So it's not even broken in yet. I get stopped all the time on the road in New Orleans. People saying, you want to sell it? I'm like, it's not ready yet. <laughs> It's a 1953 Triumph Mayflower. It's a 38 horsepower flathead four-cylinder engine, three-speed transmission. Uh, everybody was anxious to export to America after the war, and this was probably not their finest effort. It just really is not suited for American speeds and roads. 45 is top, top end, and it's happier at 30. She was not in the condition that she's in now when we got her. She has had a, a paint job and uh, the fetly bits done, as the British say. But it's a fun car. It's a yeah. fun little car. She has a big cute factor. It's the common question you get. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> <laughs> and then the second one is, why did you buy that one? <laughs> We brought our LSU Formula Society of Automotive Engineering vehicles. They're custom designed racing vehicles in a college series that we compete in Michigan and Lincoln, Nebraska every year. It's geared to 130, but we only get it up around 70. And that's just when you're late to class? <laughs> <laughs> Not late to class, it's around 90. This is a 2011 Rolls Royce Ghost. It has a 565 horsepower twin turbo V12 engine and it moves. Just the smoothness and the ride control. And it, you drive it from, from here to Atlanta and you never touch the gas or brake. The car does it all for you. Yeah, my favorite is that radar controlled cruise control. It uh, speeds up, slows down, slams on the brake itself if it has to, and uh, all you have to do is point the steering wheel, wheel where you want to go. After about five minutes, you go, oh, this car's driving itself. And all it takes is one instance where the car reacts faster than you do, and you go, oh, okay, I trust the car now. So this is the Rolls Royce umbrella that's in all new Rolls Royces in one shape or another. Right handy for when you need it. But remember, don't leave it behind in somebody's umbrella stand because to replace this part is $978. All modern Rolls Royces have two of them in one door or another. I brought the uh, 74 850 Commando Norton Roadster. I like it because of the unique character of it. There's not a lot of them around. They're, they're a real good bike. Good riding bike. That's a uh, Tiger 650 Triumph from 1971. That bike has been in the US for a little while. Yeah, it's, a good, it's a good bike. I use it nearly every day. That's why it's not in uh, perfect condition. I've got this Ferrari F430. How long you had it? I've owned it for about two years. I'm like the third or fourth owner of this particular car. I've got it close to 160 before. And frankly, you know, when I'm doing 140 miles an hour, I'm nervous. And being nervous is not fun. So just going straight, fast, that's not fun. Throwing the car around, shifting it, that's where the fun is. What does it take to be a judge? I guess somebody that uh, has an appreciation uh, for the cars, uh, enjoys talking to people about the cars, and uh, really does enjoy going through and looking at all the little finer details uh, that, that, that all the cars have. You're looking for the wow factor, you know, does the car just really jump out at you and, uh, and you know, impress you with uh, its detail or its color or its presentation. It seems to be award laden. <laughs> yeah, thank you. It is, yeah. In a Louisiana field packed with unique European cars, Robert Mansky's 1955 MG TF 1500 sporting its original paint job, provided that sought-after wow factor, winning a preservation award in its class and the Best of Lauberge Vintage Award. You got a trophy room at home? No. <laughs> no, I do not. You may need to consider okay. it. Thank you for coming.
To learn more about the Lobert's Eurofest Classic European Auto and Motorcycle Show, visit euro-fest.net. People are doing a lot of car talk, talking about carburetors, miles per gallon, all that. But it's like smiles per hour is way more important, you know, because it's it's you are in love with a car, and it shows out here, and it's just it's a great event. So we're gonna come back okay. continuously. <laughs>